Okay, here is a tutorial that is going to give us this double exposure look that we see in the skull and gears picture right here. And here's all our layers that are involved in this. Now, before we get to this point, we'll, we'll go step by step. So we're going to need you to open um, in teacher handouts. There are two files. Under the folder that says double exposure, these two files, gears and skulls. Open those two up. And you'll notice that the skull is actually in color. We're going to need you to change that to black and white. And then after you change it to black and white, I'm going to ask you to merge that layer down. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to quick select the background. So we use our quick select tool, make sure we're on the positive brush, and we're going to select the background, the white area. You may notice on this side that you're going to actually get a little bit of the skull too. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually switch to the minus brush and we're going to pull out the areas that we don't want selected. Okay. Take your time. Let the computer catch up with your selections. And once we get the background selected, again, we're selecting the background, not the skull. Once we get the background selected, what we're actually going to do is we're going to invert our selection. So we're going to go File, I'm sorry, Select, Inverse, right there. Now we've selected the skull. And if we go Refine Edge here, we'll see that our skull has been selected. Now what I want you to do is smooth it to about 10 and we'll feather it to about 5 and then we're going to output to a new layer with a layer mask. Okay. We're going to call this layer skull. All right. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go to double screen and I want you to use the move tool and I want you to bring the gears over on top of our skull and then go back to single view. So there's our gears. They're gigantic. Let's zoom out a little bit. I want you to transform them so that they just fit on top of the skull. So transform tool is control T. Control zero will enable us to see the entire box. And I'm going to hold the shift button as I resize my gears so that they fit just inside the skull. Uh, I'm going to let go of the shift tool and, and stretch them out a little bit so that they, they fit just inside. Um, you don't have to go over the, the horns, all right, just over the skull. Hit enter or double click to apply your transformation. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to actually add a clipping mask, but before I do that, I want to rename this layer gears. So in order to create a clipping mask, I just right click in the blue create a clipping mask and now you should see your gears inside of your skull uh, silhouette. Now what I'm going to need you to do is we're going to zoom in a little bit. I want to bring portions of this skull back in view. So if I look at the skull here, I definitely want the eyes to come back and maybe a little bit of what was the nose to come back, maybe even some of the cracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my gears layer and I'm going to add a layer mask. There's my layer mask. Um, I'm now going to use black paint in my layer mask with the brush tool. And now your brush tools from previous uh, tutorials, you might have a lot of different brushes. You can go ahead and re reset your brushes to get rid of all the extra brushes. We don't need all those. So our brush tool, we're going to use a hardness of about, I would say, maybe 65%. And then the size, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 90 pixels. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm in the layer mask, painting with black, and I want to bring back some of the features of the skull. So I'm going to actually, what I'm doing is I'm removing parts of the gears that you see here to bring back pieces of the skull. And you could see there is the eyeball, or what was the eye socket, I should say, of the skull. Now, I can do that on either side, bring back both of those eyes, or eye sockets. 
Also, uh, the nose area might be a place that I want to bring some information back. Now what you have to realize is I'm painting with a brush that has 100% opacity and the edge is kind of hard. So it's not going to look natural until you change your opacity, maybe lower it a little bit, maybe increase your brush size. And what we want to do is we want to start bringing other features back in. So I'm actually going to switch to white paint now and start playing with this idea of blending in parts of the machine with the skull so that it's not so unnatural looking. So by using a combination of switching from black to white and switching my opacity up and down, my, my goal here is to get something that looks kind of natural, that looks better than both individual pictures. So again, back and forth, back and forth, until we get something that we're happy with. This is where you really have to experiment a little bit. Figure out which parts of the skull are important, which parts are not. Also figure out which parts of the gears you want to focus on and which parts you think can go away. It's really up to you. Um, you could have some fun with it. Decide which parts you want to emphasize and which parts you want to de-emphasize. Go back and forth with your opacity and play with blending these two ideas together. Also switch back and forth from black to white and bring things back where you think they need to go. Okay, so here is kind of my finished product here. There's the skull before and after. I've cleaned up a lot with my layer mask. Um, I'm going to add a drop shadow to my skull. So I double click in the blue, I go to drop shadow. And I'm going to manipulate that a little bit so I can actually see the shadow coming out of the base of this, the uh, cow skull. All right, I'm going to hit OK. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in another background layer. So I'm going to go File, Open. And I'm going to go to the folder that says PS Textures. There's all sorts of textures here. I'm going to pick number 11. And what I want to do is I want to bring that texture onto my background with the skull. So again, back to my move tool, grab the texture, bring it over. And we're going to go to single view. Now my texture is actually in a clipping mask for some reason, so I'm going to release that clipping mask. And there's the texture. Um, I want to make it the size of my image, so I'm going to back out a little bit. Use my transform tool, that's control T, to make my textured background fit exactly. Hit enter. Uh, I'm going to name it background. And I'm going to drag that below my skull layer. Okay, there you go. Now that's nice, but it's not quite finished yet. Um, I'm going to create a new layer right here. And this layer I'm going to call smoke. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load the smoke brushes. And we know where the smoke brushes are located. They're underneath Digital Photo, PSD brushes, and smoke brushes by Photoshop stock are what we're looking for. It's going to give you a variety of uh, brushes that look like smoke. Just grab one, whichever one you prefer. Make it big. Now. I'm painting with red. I actually want to be painting with with black. So go ahead and one click and you'll have something that resembles smoke. Now again you can change your opacity here and your size. And I'm going to take a different brush. Let's see. Um, you might find bigger is a little better with this with these particular brushes. I'm going to lower my opacity to about 50. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's not bad. And maybe one more brush. And this time I'm going to increase my opacity a little bit. Let's make it bigger. And remember, if you want to really edit your brushes to their full capacity, maybe you need to flip one or... Actually, I, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to turn this one 
because I don't like I want it to go up so see if I turn it that way make it go up let's see what happens there that's not a bad effect um, I'm not crazy about the top being cut off like that but I think for right now we're gonna live with it okay so there's my smoke layer um, I also want to take that layer down in opacity a whole bunch so I'm gonna take my opacity of the smoke layer down to about 40% just so man, maybe maybe 50% so I get a hint of it um, the next thing I did was I created another layer I'm gonna call this layer circle and on the circle layer I used my shape tools right here and I chose the ellipse tool and I want to make sure that I'm on the middle path version of that place my cursor right in the middle of the skulls head click and hold and then I'm holding shift and alt and I'm gonna drag a circle out from the middle should be pretty centered and now what I've created is a path if I open my paths menu you'll see there's my path and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stroke the path and that means I got to go back to my brush tool and I got to go back to a regular brush not one of my smoke brushes I'm going to leave my hardness at 0% and I think for size I'm going to go somewhere around 25 and let's see what it looks like if I stroke that line with that brush uh, not crazy about that I'm going to go a little fatter on that let's say 60 pixels that's not bad now um, what I want to do is I want to click off of that path so that I can see it um, I'm not crazy about it being that solid so again I'm gonna I'm gonna lower my opacity or you could try one of your blending tools that might actually be more effective so soft lights kind of interesting overlay is pretty interesting and I still might lower my opacity and I actually created a layer mask here because I wanted the bottom of the circle to fade out so by using my layer masks and and filling it with a gradient so there's my layer mask go to the uh, gradient fill black to nothing and drag up from the bottom you can get the bottom of it to sort of fade out a little bit and you can see I'm 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 filling in that layer mask and that's about it so there's all my layers there's your finished product and that is the double exposure skull.